Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my preview for Napoli versus Liverpool. It is our second fixture in this season's UEFA Champions League. After that first one, that dramatic victory and that brilliant game in Anfield against Paris Saint-Germain. And I said at the time, um, it was such a blow to be pulled back to 2-2 when Mbappe scored because it just had a knock-on effect on when you can rest players later on in the competition, how important the likes of this game is uh, in between games against Chelsea and Man City. So to get that win was huge. But here, if we can just... If we can get six points from six, um, you know, in arguably t the two hardest games with the exception of PSG away, then, you know, we're surely in a great position to go through with two games against Red Star Belgrade, no disrespect to them, to come. Um, so Napoli themselves, you know, they drew against Red Star Belgrade away, so they really need a win here, to be honest. If they're dropping more points here and find themselves on two points after two games and they have to go to Anfield and play PSG twice, um, then they are in deep, deep trouble and us and PSG become huge favourites to go through. We, we already were the favourites, but I mean, this would pretty much leave Napoli with a miracle required. Anyway, Liverpool got an important point at Stamford Bridge on Sunday, on Saturday rather. Um, Daniel Sturridge's goal, not just uh, helping us in the title race, but helping Daniel Sturridge's cause as far as how seriously he's taken as an option this season. And a lot of people calling for him to start here in Naples. Mo Salah's form is a concern. Sadio Mane is not exactly in the form of his life. I'd say he's been better than Salah so far this season, but you know maybe only marginally and still not uh, playing to the potential that he can. He started off the season well in the first few games, but it's dipped slightly, although he's still being quite productive. And I still thought he was a threat on Saturday, so I'm not writing him off by any means. Uh, and the fact that he started against Chelsea in midweek last week suggests to me that he might be due a rest here. So that might be where Daniel Sturridge comes in. And you might see Firmino on the left, Salah on the right and Sturridge through the middle. That's an option that I wouldn't mind exploring. You've also got Shakiri who seems to get an assist every time he plays. Um, so I wouldn't be averse to seeing him, although he seems to only be playing on the right-hand side for Liverpool. Uh, and we need to get Mo Salah into form. He had a rest against Chelsea last midweek so I'm expecting him to keep his place in the team even though some might not want him to you know it's, it's crazy to suggest that um, but I think everyone should recognize he has scored a few goals already he's not it's not like he's on a long drought he's still scoring goals he's still getting into good positions he's still a massive threat to defenders um, and I, you know I think it's crazy to suggest that he shouldn't be in and around the first team every single time we're on the pitch unless we are resting him and we have got a big game against Man City on Sunday Will we have one eye on that? I think the fact that we beat PSG means we can afford to have, you know, 5% of our thoughts on that. You know, I think Klopp will pick his team for the Napoli game with City somewhat in mind. You know, he may, he may rest one or two. Will he rest Van Dijk, seeing as he had to play through pain against Chelsea? I think that might be sensible. Um, you know, and in that case, will he go for Matip or Lovren? Um, and yeah, you've got you've got the situation with the forwards. You've got the situation with the midfield, which seems to change a fair bit. Naby Keita made a big impact when he came on against Chelsea. Would it be fair to bring him in for Henderson because that was the stronger, that was the stronger midfield, um, you know, on the day. Obviously, James Milner came off as well. So plenty of options. Uh, it's you know, if I'm going to pick my starting eleven, I would go for Allison. I would go for Alexander Arnold and Gomez and Robertson, of course, on the on the left, partnering Gomez. You know, I mean, Matip did it against Southampton. Uh, Van Dijk did play really well. Um, look, we do want to win this game. If we can win this game, then, you know, a passage through to the last 16 is very, very close. Uh, it would just probably require the two wins over Belgrade. So, you know, but I, I, I do want to, to rest Van Dijk. So I'll, I'll go for Lovren because I would marginally prefer him over John Matip or quite significantly prefer him, to be honest with you. Midfield, you know, Henderson, like we say, did struggle slightly, but do you want to maybe go play it slightly safer away in Naples? They seem to play a 4-3-3 themselves with Hamsik, Alan and Zielinski playing against Juventus the other day. To match that up, I mean, that's, that's relatively offensive, you know, it's it's, it's kind of one sitter or, or probably Hamsik hitting slightly against us as well. Two sitters and Zielinski playing the more creative role so you know if we're going to match that up or maybe go something a bit more attacking I would be happy with James Milner playing again. Um, Genie Wijnaldum has been our best midfielder this season so I think he should play but I think Wijnaldum, Milner and Cater is a fine midfield. Um, we've got to be slightly offensive. I do think they're going to really go for it Napoli. The fact they need a win that they're on their home turf um, they may well leave space in behind and that's the kind of space that I want to see Mohamed Salah 
Roberto Firmino and Daniel Sturridge exploited. I am going to pick Daniel Sturridge to start this time. I think he deserves it. He seems to score every time he plays at the moment, including when he starts. Uh, he's making an impact off the bench as well, but I think Mane is due a slight rest. I want him fully fit for Sunday, uh, and he did play a long time uh, last week. Obviously, this is the last week of fixtures before the next international break. Um, obviously, the African players have got a bit more travelling to do. So, yeah, happy to give him a rest. Um, Having fit and throwing against Man City, and then you know when we come back from the break, we've got Huddersfield away, and I want everyone, I don't want him to be burnt out by that point, is what I'm saying. So yeah, Daniel Sturridge to play up front for me through the middle, Roberto Firmino on the left, where he's not done too badly this season when he has been deployed out there, uh, even if it is just in sort of 10, 20 minute splurts. And Mohamed Salah chance him to get back into form. Napoli have conceded uh, 10 goals in the league this season already. They scored 13 and conceded 10, but they find themselves second with 15 points in seven games, and you compare that to us with 19 points from seven games and scored 15, conceded three. So we're not, we're not scoring as many goals as you'd like us to, but still more than two a game, still more than Napoli, and we've only conceded three, you know, same as Man City. So, yeah, I mean, I've got no reason to not be confident. The bookies have got us as favourites. Napoli are 23 to 10, we're 21 to 20, so just over evens there. I think that's pretty fair. Um, they have got to come out and go for it. We do look pretty resolute in defence. If Van Dijk isn't playing, that is obviously... Uh, it does change things drastically, you know, we've, we've seen how we've defended without him against Chelsea in the, at home at Anfield, so there is that concern, um, but yeah, you know, the form we're in, you know, I thought we played so well at Chelsea, I really, really did, that was the most difficult and the most frantic, and if you blink for one second against Chelsea, which we did once or twice, you know, because we've got a young and experienced defence, that is going to happen. You know, we switched off for that quick free kick that was played through to Hazard and Alisson luckily made the save. We've got players in every in every line of our of our field which which are gonna make, you know, goal saving challenges or goal saving tactical decisions, you know, midfield, Vinaldum breaking up play at the moment brilliantly. James Milner been terrific in defence. The fullbacks have been outstanding. I thought they weren't at their best against Chelsea, but they were still pretty solid. I thought Robertson uh, in particular got forward pretty well. Um but, you know, Gomez and Van Dijk, Colossus, you know, uh, the best centre-back partnership in the league maybe uh, so far this season. You know, I don't think that's a ridiculous statement. Um, and then the goalkeeper, Alisson, who some have criticised him for Hazard's goal, but I think that's harsh. You know, he, he, he's moving the other way and does get fully outstretched down to his left to try and make a save. And, it, you know, he gets a hand on it. It's a lot of power on the shot. But the, the saves from Willian and Hazard um, uh, in either half were huge and... You know, those are the kind of saves you need your world record goalkeeper at the time uh, to make, and that's exactly what he's doing. So, yeah, prediction-wise, um, you know, I've not watched an awful lot of Napoli this season. Obviously, I saw them in the pre-season friendly against us, where you know they didn't play their full team. They still had Hazai, Albiol, Koulibaly, who are starting most games at the moment. Alan and Hamstick played. Kalion in senior, so they had no Dries Mertens. Um, other than that, Rui didn't start. Uh, Rog didn't start, but yeah, you know, it's still very full strength. I know it's pre-season and we we're a week, a week ahead of them in our preparations, but we did dispatch them 5-0 and they did look very troubled with our defence. I know Carlo Ancelotti will have got them well drilled since then, and, but having said that, you know, they did lose 3-1 at Juventus at the weekend. Um, they got beat 3-0 by Sampdoria earlier on in the season. They're conceding a few goals here and there, uh, not keeping a great deal of clean sheets, they conceded two at home to Milan, so you can get at Napoli, you can get at them, they, they play a similar system, so you know, if we are matching them up man for man, um, it will come down to the quality of the individual players, as well as kind of the fluidity with which we can we can deploy our system, and I think we've done it terrifically, I thought we did a great second half uh, against Chelsea at the weekend, so as long as we're not too narrow in our attacks, which we were at times on Saturday, um, I thought we knocked it long a bit too often, uh, made it very easy for Rudiger at times, and obviously, you know, Kula Bali is not a man that takes any prisoners. He's very good in the air. Uh, we don't want to be kind of feeding it to the strikers, you know, feeding it into his head and, you know, kind of hoping for little knockdowns because that's just not the way Liverpool attack. And we were forced into that because of how Chelsea were defending at times at the weekend. Um, but I thought the patient approach and just kind of quick, incisive passes, which is what essentially led to Sturridge's goal, was patient passing. We didn't necessarily have anyone in the box. Um, at the time, you know, Sturridge was probably the closest, well, I think Firmino was in the box, but well marked. Other than that, Sturridge was probably the closest man to goal. Uh, Shakiri found him, Van Alden was playing some nice little passes, just dictating play. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully that's the sort of stuff we can. That's the sort of attitude we can play with in Napoli. Patient, and if we, we if we have to settle for a point, if it's a tight game, then so be it. A point in Naples isn't the worst point. We have still got to bring them to Anfield. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy with it. But I'm still going to predict us to go there and get a win. I think uh, you know Man City went there and won last season. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for us to do the same. I think a three one win for the Reds isn't unrealistic at all. My goal scorers are Daniel Sturridge, Mohamed Salah. And Genie Van Alden, why not? I seem to pick him all the time lately now, now that he's scored away from home. I'm going to go for him again. Uh, and I'm going to go for the Reds to top the group uh, at this stage in proceedings. So that would be lovely. And yeah, leave your predictions in the comment section below. If you're going out to Naples, of course, be careful. Follow the instructions of uh, the, the uh, Merseyside Police. It's on the Liverpool website at the moment. Um, I'm flying out tomorrow morning, first thing. I'm going to stay at Stansted Airport tonight. Um, and get a flight at 7.30am tomorrow, getting into Naples at 11.20am Italian time and then, yeah, looking forward to exploring the city, enjoying it, um, staying out of trouble and cheering on the Reds to hopefully two wins some two in the Champions League and then we move on to Man City, which I cannot wait for at Anfield. If it's anything like either of the two games we played against them uh, uh, home last campaign, then it's going to be special and, you know, already title, uh, title hopes are kind of resting on the result there, if we lose it, suddenly there's a three-point gap. If we win it, we're, we're in control of the, of the title race, going into the second international break. So, exciting couple of games coming up. Let's get this one out of the way. Really looking forward to it in Naples. Uh, subscribe to this channel, of course, if you're new. There'll be a vlog from Naples. And, yeah, make sure you're following on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook as well for more. See you next time.